Michael, what's going on? How you doing, JK? I'm good, man. I'm good. I, I, I've, I've missed you. I feel like I haven't seen your face in a very long time. Both busy people. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so look, let's let's talk about this horse. I, I talked. We did a, uh, an episode a couple of days ago where I picked him as a one of my long shots that I think you know is a double digit type horse that can get involved, and a lot of that has to do with my trust in you as a horse trainer. But also, I, I think there's something to be said about a horse with all of this kind of back turf pedigree and stamina. Uh, are you going to be worried about endlessly at the eighth pole? Or uh, are you going to be worried about the seven eighths pole? I would be worried about him just basically in general. You know, as I had mentioned before, I've seen the horse work 30 something times on the dirt. They've been decent, none of them have really been eye catching. Um, you look through and through his pedigree, it's laden with turf, it's laden with stamina. Um, it's no secret that sometimes turf horses do run well at Churchill Downs. However, I do not believe that the racetrack we're seeing at Churchill Downs now is akin to what you've seen in the past, Animal Kingdom and those types of things, Barbaro especially. Uh, the racetrack's not as tight and as fast as it used to be. Um, times change, surfaces changed. Um, so in the back of my mind, I can't tell you that, you know, he's going to, to relish the surface. He's not going to like it. Um, I can tell you that a mile and a quarter will be no issue for him. Um, I think we saw that the other day in the Jeff Ruby where going a mile and eight, he was actually running away from horses, you know, um, Synthetic, not a whole lot of kickback, very easy on horses. The first Saturday in May, there are lots of obstacles um, for not just endlessly, but the other 19 entrants. There's 150,000 people. There's the threat of an off race track and rain. There's my old Kentucky home. There's a new paddock. Um, there's sounds, there's sights, there's things, you know. 50, 60 feet above their head. These are all new things for everybody this year. But, you know, my horses had two works over the racetrack there. I thought they were more or less like I've seen, decent without being eye-catching. Uh, we worked five-eighths last week and a minute and four-fifths. His gallop out was just okay. That's kind of what I've seen all along. Now, how do I know this horse doesn't just – show up on Derby Day and, and, and run a banger. I don't. I can't tell you that. Um, after speaking with Mr. Ammerman, he had asked me to go ahead and keep an open mind. As you know, right after the Jeff Ruby, I was bullish on running in the American turf. After speaking with Mr. Ammerman and the different scenarios that he had laid out for me, I more than understand where he's coming from. So this is truly going to be a joint effort between the Ammermans and myself um, we'll go ahead and work this weekend. Obviously, the draw is Saturday night, one week out from post time, which is a little new, too. You usually have a couple of days after you work. But, um, you know, right now, all I can say is, is the horse is doing well and he's very healthy. And that is my that is my biggest concern right now. Um, there are, what? 1,500, 1,600 horses, 1600 horses nominated to the Kentucky Derby every year. 20 of them line up on the starting gate. If you would have asked me four months ago if I thought this horse would have been, you know, one of the leading point earners for the Kentucky Derby, I'd have thought you were crazy. The way things have worked out, he's gone ahead, won two races in impressive style on a synthetic uh, surface, and here we are. Any other questions? Well, you know, I think the <laughs> – <laughs> I got a couple. These mini pods are brought to you by Free Rain Coffee Company. They've been powering the In the Money team throughout the Triple Crown prep season, and the coffee is fantastic. Whether you're looking for whole beans, grounds, or pods, Free Rain give you what you need to get up and get after it. And they've got subscriptions available too, so you never run out. Use our promo code MONEY20 for a 20% discount site wide 
over at freerainecoffee.com. During Kentucky Derby week, you can get $10 money back if your win selection runs second or third. For all the information, check out twinspires.com. No, so, you know, I, I think that there's a couple things that, that to pick up from there is that, you know, I think of those 20, they're going to get in that starting gate. I would say that half of them don't want to go a mile and a quarter. Now, they'll all get a mile and a quarter. It's just how fast they'll get the mile and a quarter. I think that that's definitely a positive that you have with Infosley is that you do know that part of the race. When, when they're tired, he'll be running. Now, how fast he's going to be running, I think, is the question on how he handles the surface. But, you know, you said it best. I mean, I, there's, there's, there's not just Animal Kingdom. There's Patio Prado. There's Dullahan. There's a lot of horses that were, quote, turf horses that ran well on the first Saturday of May. And I understand your point that the mm-hmm. racetrack – has changed a little bit, but you know, I've seen you do some magic at Churchill Downs before a little city of light action. I've seen you do some things there. True. Um, we're awfully comfortable there at Churchill Downs. I was fortunate enough to be a part of, uh, you know, a great run of horses, uh, during my tenure with Todd Fletcher, I think 20 something horses we went over to the paddock with lucky enough to be there. Super safer when he got the job done. Also unlucky enough to be there with horses like Eskender Rea, um, likely post-time favorite. Uncle Mo, same thing, likely post-time favorite. And then them never getting to see the starting gate. So I've been fortunate enough to see both sides of it. Um, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good on that day, you know. Um, and in the 20-horse field, it's going to take some luck. I always liken the Kentucky Derby to something like the Indy 500. It's blast off right from when the gates open, you know, everybody's jockeying for position. The race obviously isn't one within the first three eighths of a mile or first half mile there, but it can easily be lost. You know, um, everyone wanting to get good position going into the first turn and turning up the backside. So um, fortunate my horse does not need to be a part of the early fray. He does not need to be up close early. Uh, he places himself kindly behind horses and um, whichever race we end up in on Saturday, whether it be dirt or turf, that's uh, those are these tactics we'll, we will uh, that will will apply. Well, we'll be rooting for the navy blue, whether it's the silks of the Ammermans or uh, your saddle towels, the MWM. Michael, I appreciate your time.